Hey Wargamers, today I want to talk about Hormigods and the new Tyranids Codex for 8th edition. Uh, before I do that though, I want to say thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, the subscribe button, and that way you don't miss any of my upcoming unit reviews, battle reports, or other 8th edition content. Cool, so let's hop into it. Hormigods, uh, you know, they've been through... Uh, you know, ups and downs over the past couple of editions. Um, in this edition, I think that they actually have a much better use than they have in the past, uh, but they still suffer from some uh, limitations. That makes them not amazing, but pretty pretty good. So, uh, Hormigants, movement 8, that's an important feature. Uh, movement 8, they're fast. Weapon skill 4 up, ballistic skill 4 up, strength 3, toughness 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks. Um, five leadership with a six up save. So t-shirt save, they're not gonna last very long uh, once they get shot at, but uh, in combat, they're gonna put out a fair number of, uh, I would say punches, but there's gonna be slashes. They're gonna be like that. So uh, a unit can contain 10 Hormigants, up to 30 Hormigants, and uh, each is uh, armed with a pair of Scything Talons. Scything Talons, of course, are strength user, so Strength 3, uh, AP 0, 1 damage, and you can re-roll hits of 1 for Scything Talons. So, uh, you know, on average, you're going to be making a little bit more than 1, a little bit more than 1 uh, hit per Hormigant on average. Yeah. So, yeah. They have instinctive behavior, uh, so especially with these larger larger units you're going to want to have them within synapse range. Uh, not necessarily because of the the problems with charging, although that is important, but because they are so uh, easy to kill that morale is going to be a big issue for them if they are not within synapse range. So keeping them close to a synapse creature is going to be critical. Uh, things like hive guard or hive tyrants, uh, tyranid warriors if you have them, uh, neurothropes, uh, Broodlords, those are going to be things that are going to work out well for these guys in terms of keeping them on the board. Uh, Bounding Leap, this is another special rule that they have that actually makes them, uh, I think it, it's one of the, the you know better components about them. It really makes brings a lot of utility to the unit. Uh, Bounding Leap, whenever this unit piles in and consolidate, it moves six inches or up to six inches so you don't it's not three inches it's six inches for them which is really important um uh and then uh hungering swarm if the unit contains 20 or more models you reroll wounds of one so um yeah let's talk about that in a second let's go back to the bounding leap special rule about why that's important um the reason that that is important is because this unit is not necessarily meant to go through and uh, you know clean up an army. They're going to be able to clear through some chaff, um, so like a big unit of conscripts or infantrymen or uh, elder uh, are going to be you know hard struck by these guys. But um, marines, anything that has a fair bit of durability to it, is not going to be as concerned with hormigants as we might want them to be. Instead, this unit takes on a very similar role to gargoyles. If you haven't seen my gargoyle video, uh, check the description below. But hormigons are really specialists at tying up enemy units. Um, being able to uh, pile in uh, six inches allows them, depending on how you position uh, during your charge, to engage many more enemy units and the same thing with consolidation. It allows you to consolidate um, closer to enemy units and be able to tie them up more easily your following turn. So this is uh, really nice because it allows a unit of Ormigants to uh, run up the battlefield, tie up that front line uh, in, in a single round of uh, combat potentially, uh, and tie them up, make them either fall back or, you know, stay in combat. And this not only prevents them from shooting, but it also restricts the movement of the rest of the enemy line. Uh, then in your following turn, depending on how the enemy reacts, if they're still there, anything like that, uh, you're able to uh, grab additional units 
and really these guys just kind of percolate percolate through the enemy line and are able to just grab a bunch of units and prevent them from firing. This enables the rest of your army to maneuver, fire, charge, um, all of their, their, their uh, key tactics. They're able to use them more effectively because you don't have to worry about the enemy shooting at you as much. So using Ormagants to um, tie up enemy units first by charging and uh, piling in strategically uh, to touch as many units as possible and then in fo following turns using them to move uh, further through the line and uh, allow your other units to engage the units that you're leaving behind you um, is really an advan advantageous way to use them. Because of this, uh, you want to have them have Hormigons be a fairly large unit, not only because you want to be able to tie up as many units as possible, but again because they have a really low durability um, and, and also because they have these nice benefits of if you have 20 or more you're able to re-roll. So uh, having a unit that's at least 15 is you know, almost required a unit of 10 Hormigons is just going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be dust in the wind, just, pff, it's not going to last. Um, so you need at least a unit of 15, but really you should have at least 20 in a unit. Um, up to 30 is going to be a good option because you're going to need those bodies to, to tie up as many units as possible. Uh, as far as which, um, which high fleet this works best with, well, I think Behemoth is a really good option for these guys. Again, Kraken would be a good one, particularly because of the stratagem when mixed with Onslaught. Uh, if you're able to use uh, their stratagem and get them to uh, you know advance another 10, 10 inches that really helps facilitate moving them into combat um, and getting them where they need to be early on in the game um, and if they because if they don't make it into close combat uh, you know turn one turn two they're going to have a very limited utility to you um, they're most likely going to be kind of leftish kind of running around the board uh, you know, grabbing objectives, stuff like that. If if you're not able to, or or dead is probably the more likely <laughs> the more likely option there. So you really need them to get into combat. Um, and having having Behemoth, having Kraken, both of those are good um, high fleets to facilitate that. Are these guys better than gargoyles for this? I mentioned earlier that I think that gargoyles are a good uh, unit to do the same type of thing. Uh, I mean, gargoyles have the advanta advantage of being faster, but um, they're not going to do as well in combat, and they're not, they don't have the ability to do the bounding leap, pile in, and consolidation, which I think is, again, is important because it allows you that little bit extra maneuverability in, those, in the fight phase to um, tie up additional units. Um, and so... Uh, heart, or gargoyles are going to be able to uh, do this to a better extent if um, if all you're worried about is getting that front line engaged gargoyles are going to be great if you're worried about kind of moving through the enemy line and tying up more units hormigons are going to be the better option so uh, that's what i think let me know what you think in the comments below and of course happy wargaming yeah.